Good morning, everyone. I just want to go over uh, some procedural uh, things before we begin the liturgy. Um, first of all, the bishop is asking that everyone's mask stay on throughout the time when they're inside the church, except, of course, if someone is up here, either because they're uh, doing a reading or helping with communion. Funerals these days end differently than they used to. What will happen is that we'll, we'll use, as we always do, we'll use incense and song to commend Sue to God. And then uh, the Cedarburg Funeral Home personnel will remove her cremated remains from the church. And while they're doing that, I have to take off this uh, outer vestment and I have to put my mask back on and take the Eucharist from the altar. And we're just going to use the main aisle for communion. We've actually got some markings on the aisle uh, for proper spacing. And then when, after someone has received the Eucharist, uh, you don't go back to your, your, to your place. You continue and exit the church, and we're going to be having the, pra the final prayers of committal across the parking lot and the parish cemetery. So those who are not receiving communion, they would just start leaving starting from the back of, of church, and this way, there's a slow trickle of people leaving the church instead of everybody leaving all at once. I'll go over that again uh, right before uh, communion begins. Feels like a long time coming. Let us stand and gather in song.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, one of the nicest parts of Christian faith is our belief that all the ties of love that keep us together when we're alive, that those don't come apart when someone dies. And so confident that God always remembers the good that we do, let us take a moment of silent prayer and ask God to gather Sue to himself. Almighty and eternal God, you made the union of husband and wife a sign of the union between Christ and the Church. Give mercy and peace to Sue, who was united in love with her husband Howard. May the care and devotion of her life on earth find a reward in heaven that is lasting. Look with kindness on her family and her friends, as they now turn to your great love, strengthen their faith, and lighten their loss. We ask this through Christ our Lord. I invite you to please be seated. First, I'd like to talk about who Mary Sue Crawford was. She was a lot of things. She was stylish, and I know where I get my style from. She was hip, caring. She was intelligent. She was witty. She was healthy, happy, active, and so many more things. She was my best friend. She was my role model, my hero, and my biggest fan. She was a lover of HGTV, card games, board games, books, the ocean, movies, mint chocolate chip ice cream. However, she would buy chocolate ice cream because she knew how much my grandpa loved chocolate. She loved Pinot Grigio wine, and she loved a good salmon from Lucky Steakhouse with her family. She loved Vera Bradley purses and Chico's clothing. She adored her kids and grandkids, but most importantly, she loved her husband. Some of you might not know, but I have a passion for writing. My love for writing extended from my love for reading. This is definitely something I picked up from my grandma. When I was in high school, I took journalism and creative writing classes. I fell in love with telling stories. Later on, I went to college to study communications and pursue my passion. My grandma was always a huge supporter of me. She loved to read anything I wrote. That is why I feel incredibly lucky to be standing here today reading to her, reading to you all a story about life, love, and loss. She was the most amazing, caring person. She loved her family to pieces. She loved shopping with her sister, Carolyn. She loved spending endless amounts of time with her daughter, Kelly. She loved spending the winter months in Florida at the ocean with her husband. She loved supporting her children. She supported her son, Tim, 
in every single Ironman competition, and her son Todd at every Lisa Calagrasi Foundation Gala. She loves watching her son Terry and her daughter-in-law Michelle center their family around God's love. She loved and adored her three grandsons, Davis, Evan, and Nicholas, and supported them in all their endeavors. She loved making cookies with her favorite granddaughter, her only granddaughter. She would make sure to send her grandchildren and children a card for every holiday. She taught me the importance and significance of sending handwritten notes. She worried about her family, but in the best way, the most loving way. I swear she worried about us up until she took her last breath. I'll tell you, the last time I saw my grandma, she hugged me and said, you have to go and take care of your brother, your mom, and your dad. She was very adamant in me going and being there for them. My grandma passed away on my graduation from college weekend. My family would travel to West Virginia to be with me this weekend. I think my grandma knew that she had to wait until my family was reunited before she could let go. She told me I had to take care of them, and she wanted to give me the chance to do so. She knew that my family would be able to get through it if we were together, so she dealt with her pain so that we could be okay. You see, this is the definition of love. It's unconditional, worrisome, forever, and endless. Her love for all of us is definitely endless. She loved everyone and all. She loved the world despite evil, she loved God through thick and thin. The thing about my grandma was she cared about all of us and thought about us more than she did about herself. Every flight one of us would take, she would want our flight number so she could track us and make sure we landed safely. She also wanted to know about the events in our lives like concerts and sporting events. She wanted to know the exact seats we would sit in so she could look for us on TV. She loved pictures. She would save all the pictures we would send her on her phone, and sometimes I would catch her looking back and scrolling through them. When I think back, my grandma loved pictures because she loved seeing her kids and grandkids happy and smiling. My grandma always supported me on all my endeavors. One of the biggest decisions of mine was to attend West Virginia University. My grandma was very encouraging to me in college, from texting me good luck during finals week, to watching all WVU sporting events to see if she could find me in the stands. And one time she did. With that being said, my grandma wanted to attend my graduation so badly. She told everyone about it and talked about it all the time. So I think it's very fitting that my grandma passed away the morning before my graduation. The only way she could attend graduation was if she was in heaven. She was the foundation of our family. She was our rock. We looked to her and went to her for almost everything. She is the reason why all of us are who we are today. She carried us on her back. 
It amazes me how much we didn't realize she was doing for our family. She instilled this strength in all of us that is indescribable. I truly believe that this strength is for this moment. God gives his hardest battles to his strongest soldiers. In so many ways, I think about what God's plan was for her. I believe that this loss was his plan. As we all sit here today, I believe that this is the right time. We are in the right place. It is his plan. I know she will live within all of us. She loved all of you here today, and that love will forever remain in our hearts. I'd like to leave you with this thought. My grandma once looked at me and said, Elizabeth, we are on this earth for a short time. But we are in heaven for an eternity. We must live that we must live our life on earth with that thought in mind. And now Todd will read from the book of Proverbs. A reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and makes cloth with skillful hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward of her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord.
Now Tim will read from Paul's second letter to Timothy. A reading from the second letter of Paul to Timothy. I have competed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me that day, and not only me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved, he said to his mother, woman, Behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scriptures might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel there filled with common wine. So they put a sponge soaked in the wine on some hyssop and put it to his lips. When Jesus had taken some of the wine, he said, Now it is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When their child, Jesus, died, Joseph had a much easier time with it than Mary did. I'll tell you why, and then I'll tell you why that thought came to mind as uh, we were out where all those photographs were on those easels out in the gathering area. You see... In the day of Jesus, a woman always, always had to be taken care of, housed, and provided for by some man. At first it was her father, and then it was her husband. 
if her husband died, then it was uh, her son. Hopefully she had a son. So now we get a new understanding of why Jesus gave his mother to the care of another man. Well, we know that Jesus is going to die, so he's not going to be the one to take care of his mother. What does this also mean, though? Who else has already died? Joseph. When their child Jesus died, Joseph had a much easier time with it than Mary did. Because Joseph was already on the other side. And there are members of Sue's family, and there are friends of Sue who are having a much easier time with her earthly death than we are because they are already on the other side. I don't know if you noticed on one of the, the easels in the gathering area with all the pictures, at the top of it it says, Miss You Forever. And all those photographs on that easel are of people, relatives, friends who have already died and are on the other side and who, consequently, are having a much easier time with Sue's death than we are. We often forget that. That what is happening here today is that some of Sue's family and her friends are handing her to other members of Sue's family and other friends of Sue who are already on the other side with the Lord. Those on this side are having a hard time with it because it all seemed to happen so fast. They were telling me before we started that this picture of Sue, I guess she went on a cruise in December before all the chemo started, before the stroke, before all of it. I guess it was her, oh, it was her birthday, her, her 80th. It just So what we are doing at this, this liturgy is handing Sue home. In the Catholic Church, to do this, uh, we'll be doing it again at, at, uh, more towards the end of, of the funeral. But in the Catholic Church, uh, since 1986, to do this, we've been uh, using song. I guess uh, Sue enjoyed researching her, uh, her Irish roots and her lineage to Ireland. So what I did was I put in everybody's worship aid a little white sheet of paper. And what we'll do is we're going to sing this together. The melody is pleasantly memorable and especially appropriate.
I invite you all to stand so that relying on God's goodness we may turn to the Lord with our prayers of intercession. Howard and Sue entrusted their hearts to one another. May we join Howard in now entrusting his beloved wife to the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer, Lord, hear our prayer. Saint Paul says, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Sue was noted for her Christian witness and love of her faith. May she now receive the crown, which has been reserved for her. We pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer, Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are struggling with serious health problems, especially those who are near death, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for Sue's family and for her friends. May they be consoled by Christ, who cried at the death of his friend Lazarus. We pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all those we love who have died. May they come to greet Sue and take her to see the face of God. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray lastly for all of us. May our faith in eternal life always remain strong. We pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, our shelter and our strength, you always listen to the cries of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brothers and sisters, and especially for Sue. Cleanse them of any sin, and grant them the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father.
as we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O God, we ask your mercy that Sue, who never doubted your son to be a loving Savior, may now find in him a merciful Redeemer who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal God, through Christ the Lord. For in him the hope of resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by death might be consoled by the promise of immortality. Indeed, for your faithful people, Lord, life is changed, not ended. And even when our earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for us. And so, with angels, archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, and without end we acclaim. you to either kneel or be seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence 
and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Lord, remember Sue, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, so that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours. Knowing, of course, that our, our true and our real home is in heaven with the Lord, let us pray together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please be seated. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of the Eucharist, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our sister Sue may come to the banquet table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Just want to point out a couple things before the, we bring this portion of the liturgy to a close. Um, first of all, remember that after this sung handing of suit God, then the, the personnel from uh, Cedarburg Funeral Home will take her cremated remains out into the gathering area, and then I will distribute the Eucharist in the main aisle. After you've received the Eucharist, you can just simply collect your things and head across the parking lot. And as soon as I've given the Eucharist to the last person in line, I will simply get the, the prayer book and we will have her uh, committal prayers in the cemetery. If you're wondering why we do this, uh, Psalm 141 has this great line, Lord, let my prayers rise before you like incense. All throughout this funeral, we have been praying that Sue would be taken home to heaven. So when you pray and you use incense, it sort of makes your prayers visible. And I got a really good rose gardenia scented incense, which I think Sue would most heartily approve of because we know that we will be seeing her again with all those who are currently on the other side when the love of Christ finally brings an end even to death itself. So for this moment, I invite you all to stand.
invite you to be seated. Who dwell in shame 